Jesus Christ. That gives power to people to see where the darkness really is in this world. That's how I know the Gospels are true, is it gives me real light to see where the scorpions and the serpents are. You know, it's, it's like, it's like wow, people that are studying all these philosophies and all these so-called high religions and everything, but they can't understand the simple standard that Jesus taught of how to know what is real truth in this world. Well, if it's real truth, if it's real God, if it's a real God, well, he will prove it. By whatever you're believing, there will be power that is supernatural, supernormal, that only God can do. Well, that's those who believe in the gospel. They get that confirmation. Signs, wonders, miracles happen in their lives. They can see things that no one else can see. They can trample over the scorpions and the envious and the jealous and the liars and the cheaters and so much subtle evil that none of these gods, and I'm talking from 35 years of experience with other gods living half my life in India and having all kinds of ecstatic experiences and all of this that none of them can protect you from. They just bewilder you more. These are these powerful principalities that, that Christians, real Christians, those who accept the real gospel and have experience of the gospel, wrestle with. And no one else can wrestle with them. No one else has the power to. And this simple message from Jesus gives one the power to wrestle with the greatest principalities that are controlling the world. It is really true that Jesus said, I have overcome the world. He, you know, he told his disciples, hey, be cheerful, man. I have overcome the world. And they didn't obviously understand, what is this? Why, why should we be happy that he overcame the world? What does that have to do with us? Yeah, a lot. Because that's how we overcome the world, because he overcame the world. He was nailed to the cross, therefore we are nailed to the cross. The payment of sins were on that cross. Anyone who doesn't believe that is an antichrist. These antichrists are being worshipped by millions and they're scorpions and snakes. And people are worshipping them. Pious people and all of this. Why are they antichrists? Because they don't believe Jesus died for their sins. There are many Christians who went over to people like that and are in bondage. They are captive and only the Holy Spirit and those who have the Holy Spirit can dare to set them free because that's what the Holy Spirit does. If any real Christian in any other religion or philosophy hears the truth, they have a chance to be set free because that's what the Holy Spirit does than those who are filled with it. It sets the captives free. That's what Jesus, the first one, the firstborn of the Father said. I'm anointed with that Holy Spirit to preach the good news to the poor, to set the captives free that are in bondage see, in this world by these principalities. All things have delivered unto my hands by the Father. Jesus declared it. It's true. He's delivered all those things to those who believe in him. Even oneness and unity with the Father that he has. Who is giving anything in comparison? People say they have the highest religion, the highest philosophy. They're telling you, you got to work for it to get free of sin. Don't believe that Jesus died for your sins. That is untrue. No, those words are untrue that they say. They are keeping people who believe in Christ in bondage because you believe them and not what Jesus said not with the message that was transmitted by the gospel say. Just believe in Jesus 
and you will be set free from sin. That's Those who speak under the Holy Spirit say that. Why? Because Jesus said that. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, and this is what it's going to do. It's going to convince, convict, approve, reprove the world of what is really sin. And what is really sin is unbelief in Jesus. He didn't have a whole big list. Well, this is sinful, this is sinful, and this is sinful, and this is sinful, and everything is sinful. No, he said, no, just unbelief in me. Because that breaks the back of all sin is believing in Jesus and only Jesus and that he is the narrow gate. He is the door. There is no other way to go into a relationship with the true God, the true Father, except through him. Why? Because the gospel message says that. Many Christians don't believe this anymore. They're going into the oneness gospel and all these things. Different paradigm. See, different conception, a different doctrine that wasn't given by Jesus or transmitted to the Gospels. Therefore, they become under the Antichrist because you go against the conception that Jesus transmitted to his disciples as transmitted in the Gospels. It's that simple. That's the narrow gate. Can't be any narrower than that. He said, Jesus said, enter the narrow gate. Those who hear from him who heard from him will hear the same message. Enter the narrow gate. Okay. Those who never really listen to him or those who are deviated by the Antichrist who go against the message of the narrow gate that Jesus is the only way will be against this. And they side with the this the against Christ, against the missing of God, the true God to set the captives free. 